morning, everyone. Thank you. Success, Georgia, Anita, Siddikenu, uh, Lupega, and Ilya uh, Lama for joining class this morning. Uh, good to see all of you. Hope all of you are doing well. Yes. No response. Okay. Yes, no, we are doing well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jafina, for joining. Good morning. Welcome to class. Okay, can I ask one of you to uh, good morning success? Can I ask one of you to please lead us in prayer, please? In Jesus' name. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. The ancient of this want to say thank you this morning. I want to give you all the glory because you are worthy to be praised. Thank you because you wake us up this morning to learn through your daughter. My Father, my God, we ask the Lord that take up command control in the name of Jesus. Lord, release your grace and your anointing through your daughter to us today in the name of Jesus. That as she speaks to Lord, she will speak your mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, success. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a holiday today, but I think uh, this Bible college is on. We're all on a working mode. So, uh, so yeah, I think some of the others are on holiday. Anita, are you on a holiday today? No, ma'am. <laughs> okay, you're working. So I think Bible college, Jeffina is also. Anyway, Siddhi, can you, you're on a holiday today? Yes, ma'am, I'm on a holiday today. Okay, but good to have you in class. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's a festive um, uh, season here uh, in India. So, you know, everyone's pretty excited because I think after the lockdown for the last two years, um, you know, they hadn't had the access of just meeting together and having fun. So it's everybody's in a great big mood of celebration. Anyway, we're celebrating... Uh, you know, God, we're celebrating Jesus, we're celebrating all that he's done in our lives. Um, and this morning we are looking at the second chapter in uh, Kingdom Builders. Uh, we're uh, looking at, uh, we looked at how, you know, what the kingdom of God is, the different aspects of the kingdom of God, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, and now we're going to look at how we should be kingdom builders. Okay, so... Uh, what is the framework that we work within, what are things that we keep in mind, how do we, what are the things that we put on, what do we, things that we put off, uh, and uh, how do we build God's kingdom, how should we be, uh, you know, uh, kingdom builders, good kingdom builders, okay. So we looked at chapter one, which was just a review of what we had learned in um, uh, the Kingdom of God, uh, the publication Kingdom of God. Now we're looking at chapter 2, Christ the King of the Kingdom. We also studied this in uh, the publication, uh, uh, the Kingdom of God. So we're just going to go through uh, some of this. Um, and the first aspect we, we looked at was, um, you know, that we need to be co-workers with the king. We need to partner along with him. We also need to partner along with others. And we spoke about the importance of uh, working together, the importance of unity and how, you know, God uses one man to sow, the other to water, yet the other to reap. But, uh, you know, uh, one man lays the foundation, the other one builds upon it, the other one takes it further. So, you know, regardless of what each one of us are doing, each one of us are equally important, whether it's small or big task, each one of us are important because, you know, we are all edifying the body of Christ. We are all important to edify and build uh, uh, the body of Christ. Each one of us are roles, the talents, the gifts that God has given to us. And we looked at Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 6, regarding this in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 and 15 to 16. And that is where we um, stopped. Okay, so this morning we're going to continue with chapter 2, uh, you know, where it says that our relation with the king of the kingdom is of prime importance. So if you want to build God's kingdom, then, you know, you just don't work on, you know, building 
building uh, networks with other pastors, with other leaders, um, you know, with uh, uh, the heads of denominations or bishops, or, you know, you don't just look for um, a network of ministers or spiritual covering. Well, all that is important. We need to build a healthy relationship with uh, fellow ministers. But what really qualifies us uh, to be kingdom builders is our relationship with the king. That is of prime importance, okay? Uh, because if you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse uh, 16 and 18 a very very uh, powerful uh, passage of scripture you know can one of you please read colossians chapter 1 verses 16 to 18 please colossians 1 16 to 18 colossians chapter 1 verses 16 to 18 Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 to 18. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things coexist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Jeffina. So here we see that, uh, you know, in who's the head of the church? Who's the head of the church? It's verse 18. Who's the he who's the head of the church? Christ. Sorry? Christ, Christ yes. Is Christ is the head of the church. Uh, and in him, all things uh, hold. Uh, he created all things, um, and through him, all things exist. In him, all things exist. For him, all things exist, uh, that he may have the preeminence. Preeminence uh, means we give him, you know, his pre, uh, preeminent means he's more important than anything else because he is the head of the uh, church. So, you know, um, in the kingdom of God, you know, we need to remember this thing with this powerful truth we need to keep telling ourselves again and again that you know we are here to build god's kingdom as kingdom builders and the head is not me you know it's not i but it is christ you know when we keep telling ourselves that you know uh, we can uh, you know we will not fall into pride or you know we will not fall into thinking that i'm building my kingdom my church my ministry my organization we will always be mindful that we are building the kingdom of god and the head is christ he receives all the glory and the uh, uh, honor okay so christ is more important uh, in in all that we do, uh, you know, uh, even as we are considering to build uh, his kingdom, we are building not our kingdom, but Christ's kingdom. Uh, and so that is very important for us to be mindful of. And, uh, you know, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10 says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When Jesus taught us how to pray, he says, your kingdom come. So it's not my kingdom come or it's not my pastor's kingdom to come, or it's not my father, who earthly father who has a church, not his kingdom or his church to come, but it says your kingdom, which is talking about the father's kingdom, the heavenly father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in uh, heaven. So we need to be uh, mindful of this fact and this truth that it's not about me, my ministry, my church, my organization, uh, you know, but it's about building, God's uh, uh, kingdom, okay, and we should desire to build His kingdom, and we des we desire to see His kingdom come and His will be done, and not our will be done, uh, and not see our ministry come, but His ministry come and His will be um, done. And we are here to do what God wills, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, not what we will, what we feel comfortable, what we like, but we're here to do what God is asking us to do. And also, we need. Uh, to give him uh, the glory uh, because he deserves all the glory, honor, and power. And we know how uh, Jesus ended off the, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the prayer that he taught his disciples. He said, yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So all the glory and honor, you know, has to be ascribed to 
uh, God. Even as we are building God's kingdom, we are we need to con uh, call, be constantly pointing out, uh, uh, pointing others to Jesus. We must be conscious that we are not, you know, looking for self fame, uh, for self propaganda, for self uh, advertisement. But you know, we are constantly, uh, uh, you know, directing people's focus. Uh, their attention on Jesus and not on um, us. So even in small things, you know, uh, you know, we need to give God the glory. And sometimes we can, you know, this can come very subtly. You know, we can give God seventy-five percent of the glory, and we would like to keep twenty-five percent of the glory for ourselves. And that is why, you know, Paul says, you know, we need to crucify our flesh uh, daily. Okay, we need to crucify the flesh daily because you know the uh, uh, even this twenty five percent can slowly become fifty percent, can become seventy five percent and hundred percent. Where where we are looking for self glory and we you know we're not giving the glory and honor that's due to uh, God. So uh, our John chapter seven verse eighteen says that he who speaks for himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him. Uh, is true and no unrighteousness is in him. So when we seek to uh, glorify God, you know what we are doing. We're basically what we are doing is we are, um, you know, uh, we are uh, being pure in our hearts. You know, there is no unrighteousness in us. But if we are seeking for self glory, then you know uh, there is. Uh, a measure of unrighteousness. We are not pure in our thoughts, in our motives of serving God. And it's very important because uh, uh, the, uh, Jesus says in uh, the Beatitudes, uh, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see uh, God. So if you want to receive more revelations, if you want to see the move of God in your church, your organization, then you need to ensure that you're in a place where uh, you, know, you are giving all the glory uh, to God, ascribing him all the glory and honor because it is him who is doing everything. It is his power, his authority. It is his kingdom. He's the king. He's the one who's uh, enabling you to uh, do that. And so all of these truths, though they are very uh, simple and something that we already know, it's very important to reiterate these truths to our minds, uh, you know, time and again, because, you know, subtly they can uh, just come in and, uh, you know, the I, uh, I me, uh, you know, can take uh, precedence and uh, become the center of our lives. Uh, and that's when we see the downfall of our uh, ministry or, uh, you know, the work of God or uh, the work of God gets hindered and we don't see the move of God. We don't see, uh, you know, the church growing or people coming to the church or we don't see, um, uh, you know, um, science, miracles and uh, wonders. OK, and we need to ascribe the glory and honor because to God, because he deserves our glory and honor. Uh, you know, uh, Isaiah chapter 42 was eight. The Lord says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will give, I will not give to another or my praise to carved images. So we know that God is a jealous God, He's a zealous God, He does not tolerate His glory to be given to um, anyone else. And, uh, you know, uh, anyone else means not only to uh, idols or to different uh, ideologies or to different philosophies or to different god men and god women but you know very subtly you know we ourselves can become god men and god women uh, when we uh, try to take the place of god you know when we try to show people that it's uh, it's my preaching style it's my skills it's my wisdom uh, it's how, uh, you know, well I know God's word, how well I can just rattle off all the scripture verses. Uh, so, you know, all of the advertisements, uh, you know, our body language, everything, uh, you know, can uh, you know, can portray who we are, okay? Uh, that I am the pastor, I am the senior pastor, I am the, uh, you know, uh, uh, apostle or I am the prophet uh, and you know what God says he says you know uh, I'm I'm a, a jealous God you know I will not give my glory to another which means that it's not only just idols but you are also when you do all this you know uh, you and I can also come to a place where we are taking the place of God uh, because we are receiving all the glory and uh, honor so it's important that you know uh, we are making sure that uh, you know, Christ increases in us and we decrease and people 
uh, see Jesus in us and are pointed to the Father. Just like you know, when Jesus did um, uh, all the signs, miracles, and wonders, we see that you know people don't fall down at Jesus' feet and worship him as God, but they glorify the Father. That's what we read in the Gospels. Uh, so we see that Jesus very clearly is pointing them to the uh, Father. He says, I only do what my Father asked me to do. I only say what my Father asked me to say. I only uh, uh, you know, uh, go where my Father is asking me to go. So he's constantly pointing to the uh, Father. He's showing them the Father. He's revealing the Father heart of God uh, to them. And that is what we need to do. We need to reveal uh, the heart of God. We need to reveal the Father heart of God. We need to reveal the nature of God. And we need to tell God that it's uh, people, that it's, uh, it's his power, his revelation, his anointing is what they are receiving in and through uh, you. Uh, I like this example in Acts chapter 3 when uh, you know Peter and John go to the temple to pray and this layman who is sitting there uh, begging and he uh, just looks at Peter and John and you know he's begging and uh, you know, uh, and he, uh, Peter raises him up and he's able to walk and, you know, he's dancing and praising God. And everyone who look at uh, this miracle, seeing this lame man, you know, healed, uh, they are so uh, marveled and uh, they look, uh, you know, they just, their eyes are gazed on Peter and John, as if to say, you know, their uh, gods come down to earth. And uh, so, you know, uh, Peter and John, uh, Tell the crowd, you know, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though, you know, it's by our own power or godliness that we made at this man to walk. And it says it's not uh, us, but it's in the name of Jesus and by the power of Jesus that this man uh, was able to rise up and uh, walk. So we see that they pointed uh, people to the living God and uh, to Jesus uh, Christ. Okay, um, John chapter 5, verse 41, Jesus says, I do not receive honor from uh, men. So we need to come to a place, um, you know, where we don't desire honor from men. Uh, but that means, that does not mean that we, we do dishonoring acts or dishonoring deeds or behave in dishonoring ways. It does not mean that. It just means that, you know, we do things that are honoring in such excellence, in such perfection, uh, that uh, and we preach in such excellence and perfection, we pursue the heart of God, the will of God uh, uh, for our ministries or the places where God has appointed us in our offices. Uh, we also, uh, you know, uh, uh, preach the word of God, just waiting on God, praying, fasting and praying, receiving revelations. Uh, but then we are saying, you know, it's not me. It's not my fasting or my praying. It's not my excellence. It's not my style. But we are pointing uh, to uh, Jesus saying, you know, this is what he told me. This is what he revealed to me. And uh, so, you know, we need to uh, point people to Jesus, give him all the glory. That's what makes us true kingdom uh, builders and Jesus also, you know, he said, "If I honor myself, my honor is nothing." So honor that is uh, self-bestowed honor is uh, of no value, absolutely um, no value. Okay. Um, in John chapter five, verse forty-four, Jesus says, uh, "How can you believe uh, who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the?" Uh, only God. So here he's basically talking about the Pharisees and the uh, Sadducees, the Pharisees and Sadducees uh, the ref in Matthew chapter um, 6 verses uh, 1 to 6 and Matthew chapter 23 uh, verse 5 is basically talking about these, uh, you know, these Pharisees and um, uh, Sadducees, uh, you know, basically when they're doing their charitable deeds before men, uh, to be seen by them uh, and you know um, uh, so you know Jesus is telling them that you know you have no reward from your father in heaven because you're doing it your motives are uh, you know not to do it for the father in heaven or to give him the glory but you know to be praised among uh, men and um, so he's saying that you know uh, they actually uh, did it with no purity in their heart 
uh, and you know the righteous deeds is actually uh, you know not pleasing in God's sight because they're just doing it for uh, to get praise from uh, men. And so you know Jesus is telling us not to do these kind of acts. Uh, to display ourselves or you know to get a good image and then he's um, also goes on to say that you know when you do this you will get your reward uh, from people uh, and you will have no reward from the father in heaven so the idea is when we do righteous deeds uh, for the to get attention and applause of men uh, their attention and their applause is already become our reward but it's much better to receive a reward from our father um, in heaven okay and um, he goes on to also talk about you know uh, when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites uh, for they love to stand praying in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets uh, that they may be seen by men and uh, you know Jesus says assuredly you know I say to you that you know they have received their reward but he says when you pray go into your room you know, shut the door pray to your father who's in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you uh, openly so here basically when he says when you pray you shall not be like the hypocrites uh, he's basically talking about these men who stand in the synagogues uh, during the prayer time and, you know, they just pray in a very hypocritical manner. Or they might um, also be praying, you know, uh, during the public prayer on the streets, uh, during uh, which, is hap which happens at 9 a.m. in the morning, at noon and at 3 p.m. And, uh, you know, uh, they're doing it, you know, the hypocrites uh, are doing it so that they can be seen by men. Um, and these hypocrites prayed uh, not to be heard by God, but to be seen by men. And so, you know, Jesus is saying that there is no reward for uh, them. And also he talks about in the same passage, in these same passages, he talks about how, you know, they enlarge the borders of their garment. Um, they love the best place in the, the feast, the best seats in the synagogue. And they love, the, you know, for the people to greet them as a rabbi. Um, uh, they like to be called rabbis and also the the phylacteries you know which they put on themselves um, uh, you know all is just going to show that Jesus is saying all of this is just uh, a show it is it's not something that you know you're saying that you're doing all this because uh, you know it's told in the Old Testament like Jesus said in the Old in sorry God told the Israelites in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 18 and Numbers chapter 15 verses 38 to 40 that you know when they uh, wear their garments they have to you know leave tassels and put a, a tie the corners with a blue cord just to remind them constantly keep reminding them of the of the cover uh, co uh, the commandments that God has uh, given to them and also this uh, phylacteries are like small leather boxes uh, with tiny scrolls in them with the laws written uh, uh, in them the scriptures written on them and they tie it to their uh, their arm or uh, with the, uh, to their head with leather straps and you know all of these things uh, uh, you know God had told them to do in accordance with the law and what how they need to keep the law but all of these religious leaders you know they were doing it uh, you know to show themselves to be more spiritual than the rest okay uh, so the idea of wearing this uh, phylacteries and you know and tying these phylacteries and these special borders in their garments uh, was uh, in obedience to what God commanded uh, the Israelites uh, when He gave them the covenant at Mount Sinai. Uh, but they were using this as uh, you know to promote an image that they're super spiritual um, and you know uh, that others are sinful they are not uh, and also commanding uh, a kind of uh, respect for themselves so that you know they uh, like the great places of honor in the synagogues and people to look upon them and just you know kind of uh, uh, showing other people that you know you are not that spiritual like compared to us and uh, so Jesus is saying you know when you do all of these things just for your self-image uh, for your self motivation uh, uh, and just to show you're super spiritual, you know, you are already receiving a reward when people, uh, you know, give you the command, uh, obey your commands and give you the respect. But, you know, you need to look for uh, 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 your reward from your Father in heaven, which you will not receive if you are 
you know, already receiving your rewards from uh, the people here on um, earth. So, you know, whatever we do, whether we are praying or even singing or worshiping God, we need to always check our motives. Are we doing it uh, to get praise for men uh, to go to get uh, you know to say wow you're such a wonderful uh, you know prayer warrior worship leader preacher teacher whatever or are we doing it uh, because you know it's God's will for us in our lives we want people to know the truth we want to pe lead people in meaningful worship we want to lead them in meaningful prayer to for them to grow in their prayer walk with God or are we doing it just to you know um, magnify ourselves or to point them to Jesus or help them to grow in the ways of the uh, Lord. Okay, so the real test, you know, uh, whether our heart uh, is um, yeah, to pr in the praise of men or, uh, you know, to receive uh, praises from God is, uh, you know, what do we do when we are in a situation where we have to choose between God and men? So here, you know, in, uh, in John chapter 12, for verses 42 and 43, it says that many people, they actually uh, believed in Jesus, uh, but they did not uh, confess that they believed in him because of the fear of the Pharisees that they would be put out of the synagogues. And it says in verse uh, chapter, John chapter 12, verse 43, for they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. So when we choose to do things uh, in situations where we want to be praised by men, rather than you know uh, doing what is honoring in god's sight or doing things that we'll get a reward or praise from god uh you know because we do it because we don't want to face rejection we don't want to lose our job we don't want to lose our position of leadership roles whatever or we want to please our uh you know so-called senior pastor or our boss or whatever you know and we compromise in such situations you know um uh, you know, we are not uh, honoring God. We're not giving him the glory and honor that is uh, due. Okay, so Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 says, um, you know, Paul says, for I do, for do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a born servant of Christ. You can't be a servant of God. Uh, you know, you can't say that I'm totally submitted and surrendered to God if you are one who is pleasing men at all uh, times okay so our motivation should always be to please god and uh, not men our motivation should be that god receives all the glory uh, and you know our heart is pure in um, god's sight okay and uh, uh, psalm chapter 115 verse 1 is a very beautiful prayer that we can uh, pray to keep our hearts pure and to set our hearts in the right direction. It says, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but your name uh, give glory because your mercy and because of your truth. I think we can pray this prayer and say, God, uh, you know, let me always uh, give you your name, your kingdom be glorified in and through everything uh, that I do. Okay, um, the next thing as uh, kingdom builders we need to be mindful of is uh, even as Christ is the king of the kingdom, that our authority on earth is dependent on our submission to the um, king. Okay, so, uh, you know, we see that uh, in the garden uh, of Eden when Adam and Eve obeyed God, as long as they obeyed God, they were in dominion. Uh, of the earth you know they had a relationship uh, with God they also had the access to the tree of life but you know that the minute they uh, disobeyed God you know uh, they lost their dominion on the earth they also lost their access uh, to uh, the tree of uh, life they also lost uh, their uh, their uh, relationship with God and you know we know everything what happened after the fall so you know uh, the important keys uh, for kingdom building and kingdom authority and kingdom power if you want to have more uh, authority and power in the way you minister or the uh, for science miracles and wonders then the key is obedience and submission to the king that is to God. Okay, um, our spiritual authority is simp is simple. His dominion in me 
uh, determines his dominion in and through me. To the extent we submit and surrender uh, our lives to God, and uh, you know, is the extent that we experience spiritual authority, and uh, you know, uh, we will see Christ's dominion in us and His dominion in and through us, uh, you know, influencing the environment and the demonic spirits that are around us. To the extent that Christ reigns in us, uh, you know, uh, to the extent He can reign uh, in and through me. Okay, so when we uh, are submit, submitted and uh, obedient to Christ, uh, you know, that's when we can exercise our God-given authority and power uh, and, you know, uh, and we can move mightily, we can extend the kingdom of God here on um, earth, okay? The other point is, you know, uh, uh, let us not glory in man. Uh, in First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11 and 13, um, Paul says, you know, uh, he's talking to the church at Corinth. He's saying, you know, there is a division in the church that is happening. And he's saying, some of you are saying that, you know, I am of Paul. Some of you are saying I am of Apollos. Some of you are saying I'm of uh, uh, Cephas. Or some of you are saying I'm of Christ. They don't want to take any man's position. They're saying, okay, we are not belonging to any, uh, uh, you know, group of men that are their leaders, but we are Christ. Uh, we are of Christ. So he says, is Christ divided? You know, uh, and Paul asks a very, uh, you know, very powerful question to them. He says, was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Uh, and so he's basically saying, were you crucified by Paul? Uh, 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 you know, for Paul, did, was Paul crucified for you? Or did uh, Apollos, you know, was crucified for you? Or was Cephas uh, crucified for you? Or are you baptized in the name of Paul or Apollos or Cephas? So the answer is basically no. Okay, it's like... Uh, 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 question that he asks and the answer is very uh, evident it's a rhetorical question because the answer is there uh, the question is there but the answer is also very very uh, evident and the answer is no who who died on the cross uh, who was crucified for their sins it was jesus christ and whose name are they baptized the name of the father son and the holy spirit and so jesus so paul is saying how can you say i belong to this i belong to that person i belong to this person uh, you know, we all belong to Christ. So uh, here we see that, you know, uh, Paul is leading them to a very important truth that it's not men, you know, but it's Christ uh, that has to be honored uh, and, uh, you know, who we belong to, who died on the cross uh, for our sins and in whose name we are baptized and whose name you know, the demon shudder and shiver and whose name a sickness uh, and all demonic authorities and powers bend their knees or bow down uh, uh, before. So it's very important that uh, we, uh, we also are mindful that we don't bring about this kind of division or this groupism uh, in the kingdom of God. Because, um, you know, when we elevate man or we elevate individuals or we put ourselves above uh, others, then it Come, we come to a place where we are very subtly bringing about divisions uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, and then at that moment, we cease to be kingdom builders. Instead, we become kingdom uh, dividers. Okay. Uh, so also, you know, when we begin to elevate ourselves, thinking all this is happening because of me, uh, because of my skills, uh, my hard work, uh, my commitment, uh, you know, all of this, then, you know, what you are doing, uh, you are glorifying, bringing glory to man, but not bringing glory to um, God. Okay, so even when you elevate uh, yourself, thinking that you are more spiritual or more sensitive to God, more prayerful, more anointed than others, you are actually glorifying uh, man and not glorifying your, uh, you, uh, not glorifying God. So it's important to know where are we receiving this power, this authority, uh, the calling, uh, you know, who's giving us this power to uh, heal and to cast out demons and who's giving us the revelation. It's the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus. It's what Jesus has done on the cross. So it's not 
uh, my preaching, it's not my praying for a sinner and leading them into sinner's prayer, is what is causing them to come to salvation, but it's what Jesus has done on the cross that is cutting their hearts and it's the Holy Spirit that is working in them. So we basically know all of these truths, but you know, uh, pride just fills our heart and, uh, you know, at times, and we need to take a stock of uh, that. And so, you know, we need to be very careful uh, and not give room uh, to the evil one in, in, in any small area of our life where pride can uh, come in or uh, where our egos are growing. We need to starve those areas of our life so that, you know, uh, God can be elevated and he can be glorified in our um, lives. Okay. And um, it's as kingdom builders, we need to know that, you know, Christ is the king of the kingdom. And even as he is king, we're accountable to him because he is going to judge uh, all things. Okay. Um, so it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses um, 3 to 5, and 2 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 5, verses 9. To 11. So can uh, two of you please read those scripture passages, please? First Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 to 5, and 2 Corinthians 5, 9 to 11. Anyone? First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I know of nothing against myself. And I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord comes, who will bring to the light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Thank you, uh, Jeffina. Can someone else please read 2 Corinthians 5, 9 to 11? Second Corinthians 5, 9 to 11. It says, therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we all, but we are all, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your conscience. So Paul is saying this, that, you know, um, uh, yes, it's important for us to be accountable um, uh, to men, the way we live, the way we act. Uh, you know, we can't just do anything and say, I'm not accountable to anybody. I'm just accountable to God because he's the one who judges. No, we are accountable to men that God has placed because we saw that we learned that, you know, we are, you know, uh, God wants us to be accountable to the authority structures uh, or the authority governments that he has placed in our life, whether at home, you know, the workplace and the church uh, and the society, the government that is there, um, we are accountable to them and we need to respect them. And uh, But here it says also that, you know, uh, it, but even more we are accountable to uh, God. So ultimately we are accountable to God in all things because he's the one who's going to um, judge all men. We are all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 um, verse 10, and we will receive what we have done in our body and it says, you know, we will, uh, each one's praise will come from God. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, the last uh, phrase. And so it's important that, you know, uh, we do things uh, that are uh, uh, honorable in the sight of men, honorable in the sight of God, uh, also that is uh, honorable in our conscience. Um, and we do things so that we will be well known by God. Otherwise, we can end up saying, God, you know, I did this and I did that. Uh, you know, I fed the hungry, I clothed the naked, I visited prisoners in prison and God says, sorry, I do not know who you are. Uh, why is it so? Because we did what we wanted to do in our own will, in our own understanding uh, to receive praises from men. But 
um, not what God wanted us to do and not uh, giving him the glory and uh, honor. Okay, so we need to be accountable both to man, but we are more accountable to God, uh, who is the one who's going to judge. So accountability is simply putting, you know, is being true to God and true to ourselves. When we are true to God, and when we are true to ourselves, we'll be true to our family, we'll be true to those uh, we serve, and we will be true to those who watch over our uh, lives. So, you know, we can only be accountable to our spouses, to our children, to our bosses, our pastors, our fellow workers, uh, believers, uh, only when we are true to God and true to ourselves. And that is what uh, Paul very beautifully says, you know, but we are well known to God. So he's saying, you know, people might not know you, but, you know, it's important that God knows you. It's important that God knows what you're doing is his will and what you're doing is right. He says, and also trust our well-known in your conscience. So it's your conscience, you know, it's a God-given uh, conscience where Paul says in Romans chapter 1, he says, uh, it's the law written in our hearts. What's the law written in our hearts? It's our conscience. So, you know, this the Jews are saying we have the law. We will be judged by the law and uh, the, the Gentiles don't have the law. So how will they be judged? You know, they will be judged by their conscience or those who do not know uh, God. How will be they, they, they judge? They will be judged by their um, their conscience because it's the law written in their hearts and minds. God has put their conscience, their inner voice. Uh, he's pre-designed it or he's uh, pre-programmed our conscience to know what is right and what is um, uh, wrong. So it's our conscience. But Paul ultimately says it's not the law, it's not the conscience, but you will be judged by the gospel of Jesus uh, Christ. That is Romans chapter 1. So, you know, it's important that, uh, you know, to know that, you know, when we're true to God and to ourselves, then, you know, we will be true or accountable to the rest of our relationships, the rest of people uh, God has put in our uh, lives. But if we fail in the first two, being true to God and true to ourselves, then it's very likely that we will fall in the rest of the other uh, three areas that I um, mentioned. So God will judge us not for the amount of work that we accomplish, number of churches we pre preach, where the places we preached, you know, the number of countries we visited and preached the gospel. No, no, that's not uh, what God is going to judge us on. He's going to judge our motives, or why we did what we did. He will not judge us for the greatness of what the things that we have done, how many people we healed, how many people we raised back from the dead, how many people we led to Christ, or how many people we led into Holy Spirit baptism, but he's going to just look at, you know, if we were obedient to the Father's will, okay? And he will also judge us uh, for the significance of our calling and our, not for the significance of our calling and gifting, but the faithfulness uh, in which we carry them um, out, okay? So on these areas that God is going to uh, judge us on, it's going to judge us on our motives, our intentions, uh, obedience to the Father's will and our faithfulness in which we carry each one of them out. In Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, you know, um, uh, John is writing to the, uh, talking about the church of Sardis. He's saying, you know, um, uh, I know your works and that you have a name and that you are alive. He says, you know, uh, Everybody knows your works, your great works. Everyone knows, um, uh, you know, you have a name. That means your church is well known, uh, you know, in Sardis. And um, and you are alive. It looks like you're a very vibrant church, a very thriving church, a very uh, exuberant church, uh, your church where there is good fellowship. But um, he says, you are dead. You know, so sad. It says, but you are dead. You know, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 1 says, I know your works, that you have a name and you are alive, but you are dead. And then he goes on to say, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Okay, so this is the angel of the church uh, writing uh, uh, in, in, in Sardis writes. Okay, so the angel is saying, beware, be watchful. You know, uh, at least the areas where you're about to die, you know, be watchful in those areas. And it says, you know, God is saying, I have not found your works perfect. The works are not perfect before um, God, the angel is telling uh, to the church at Sardis. So, you know, maybe a reminder for some of us, you know, God is looking into our lives and pointing out and saying, you know, though you look very vibrant, ex you know, exuberant, uh, enjoying life, um, 
doing everything that is spiritual, um, being very churchy, church going, and involving so much of church activities. But he's saying that you know you might seem alive, people know you, but actually you're dead uh, because there are certain areas in your life, you know, where you're not giving glory and honor to God. Uh, you're not placing God first in your life. It's I, me, myself, um, and we need to you know be careful. Um, because God is saying, you know, your works are not perfect before uh, Him. Okay, so it's possible that you know we can look anointed and spiritual before men, um, but God can be disappointed with us. So our desire should be that our work and ministry be perfect before God. So we need to develop a heart of a kingdom builder. So what is a heart of a kingdom builder? A heart of a kingdom builder is a heart that is devoted to Christ the King. You know, it, it has Christ the King as a center in our hearts. Uh, it's a, the heart of a kingdom builder is a heart that seeks to glorify uh, Christ alone. Uh, the heart of a kingdom builder is a heart that does not receive honor or glory from a man. It's a heart that um, is looking to glorify and give honor back. Uh, that is due to God, that's reserved only for him. It's a, the heart of a kingdom builder is a heart that is pure in its motives. There's no unrighteousness uh, in them. And so, you know, um, pray that God would create such a heart in you as a kingdom uh, builder. Say, God, give me a heart of a kingdom builder where I'm seeking Christ alone, where my heart is not looking for glory and honor and praise from man, uh, but is looking at pointing out uh, give you all the glory and honor and give me a heart that is pure God, a heart that is righteous, even as you made me righteous, right standing with you. Help me to, uh, you know, live life uh, with pure motives and with right motives. Okay. So this is uh, chapter two. Uh, anyone has any questions, doubts, anything, any questions you want to ask, any comments you want to make? Anyone knows this uh, while you're thinking about, uh, you know, questions or doubts and you want to just, you know, write it in the chat section or you can unmute your mics and ask. Uh, anyone knows this hymn on page number 25, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name? It's a very powerful hymn. Anyone knows this hymn? Jeffina, you know this hymn? Paul, do you know this? John Paul, do you know this hymn? Um, no, I don't, Pastor. Okay, it's a beautiful hymn. Jeffina? Yes, I know, Pastor. Sorry? Yes, I know, yes. You know, okay. You want to sing? Sure. Okay. Maybe just one or two verses because we just have very little time. Yeah. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels bow to fall, let angels bow to strengthen, bring forth the royal desert, and crown him, crown him, crown him, oh, oh, oh crown him. Crown him, crown him, Lord of Lord, he chose and seed of Israel's race. He ransomed from the fall, he ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him, Lord, crown him. Oh, crown him, Lord of all. Crown him, crown him, crown him, oh, crown him, Lord of all. Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, it's a very beautiful hymn. Just love this hymn so much. Um, it just talks about, uh, you know, who has saved us. You know, it's Jesus Christ who saved us by his grace. And hence, we need to crown him because he alone is king and there's no other king besides him. Amen. Okay. Uh, anyone has any um, 
questions, any doubts? No? Okay, we'll move on to chapter three. Uh, chapter three is the Holy Spirit uh, is our uh, director. Okay. Uh, we're just going to go through this chapter very quickly because we've learned about uh, you've learned about the Holy Spirit, the person work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think in 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 the first year, uh, of the Holy Spirit. You also looked at uh, you know a uh, few uh, aspects of the work of the Holy Spirit when you uh, looked at Minister's Foundation. Basically, uh, uh, the publication that you studied, receiving uh, God's guidance, uh, and also you continue to be studying about the person and work of the Holy uh, Spirit. Okay, so we'll go for our break and after our break we'll come back and look at chapter 3, the Holy Spirit, our director. Okay. Mm -hmm. 